All right, so in this one, I'm going to talk a little bit about using alphas. So we'll start with our little polycube here, uh, whatever this is, cube 3D. I'm going to make it polymesh 3D. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and dynamesh it. And the Dynamesh, I don't want to pay for the sidewalls here, so I'm actually just going to, I'm going to kind of shrink it up a little bit because I re really just want to be working on one of these bigger faces here. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Probably increase the resolution here. It's only 128. It's probably going to need to be a little bit closer to like 1,000. So now I'm going to go to, well, I'll show you this, this alpha that I made. So just a very simple black and white texture in Photoshop. Uh, it's a square. It doesn't really matter what size the square is. This is probably 1024 by, by 1024, but you can't, like, it's not the power of two. Uh, ZBrush doesn't care. So we're going to go to alpha and we'll go to import. And we'll go over to textures. And now it's going to be sitting here in alpha. And you can see everywhere that the texture was white, we have opacity. And everywhere that's black, it's transparent. So now I'm going to need to apply this to my masking tool, which I can get to by holding control. So if I hold control, you see I get a, a yellow circle there rather than a red one. I need to change my focal shift to 100 so there isn't any, any fall off. I don't want there to be like the edges of my alpha to be grayed out. I'm going to come over to my alpha here and just click brush alpha. And then there's one more thing that I need to do. So I'm holding the control key here. I need to go to stroke because the, the current setting is, is going to be, it's going to look like this, right? That's not going to really give me what I want. Also, I still think my resolution is too low. There we go. If you Dynamesh it uh, or try to recalculate the Dynamesh and ZBrush doesn't detect any changes, it's not going to update. So, so I, I just like smoothed it a tiny bit and that was enough to, to trigger the, the update on the, on the Dynamesh. All right. Uh, so we're going to go to, I'm going to hold, a, uh, hold control down, go to stroke, and I'm going to set this to drag rect. So what that's going to allow me to do is if I hold control, now I can drag this thing straight out. And I'm going to try to go kind of big. I'm just kind of looking at some of those vertical edges. Like when you start to get off the angle, you can see there's a tiny bit of like aliasing right here, like that stair stepping thing. Uh, so I want to try to get it as, as uh, close as possible without getting right up on the edge there. And the bigger it is, the more the more geometry you have to kind of capture the detail. So whatever, that's probably OK. So this is at this point, you can I mean, you can sculpt uh, just like this, right? Like you can actually modify the geometry. The thing about using an alpha in this way is I have to pay for a really dense piece of geometry to support the alpha right? Like to support the detail that I'm trying to get there. So it'd be better if I could just create a piece of geometry that was separate. So like I can keep the main thing low and have my relatively small high detail area. Just uh, makes everything run a little bit more smoothly. So we could totally come over and hit control W just like we've been doing in the past. And now we've got, depending on the, the density of the mesh, this may be sufficient, right? You can get something that looks kind of like this, but another way to do this, we hit Control Z a couple times is to come over to the uh, let's see the geometry menu and then go to edge loop and there's an option right at the top here called edge loop masked border and what that's going to do if I zoom in a little bit and turn on my polyframe is it's going to just give you a very small edge loop right at the border of this object. So you get something that's like a little bit cleaner on the edges. It's not uh, just punched out of the, the existing geometry. You get something that's like dedicated. So now that we've got this, we probably can get rid of the other thing, right? But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate it so I can go back to my original geometry. Because imagine if you're like putting this on a helmet or something, you wouldn't want to, you would have like a version of the helmet that you, you could uh, go back to like this. Right. And this this could be our low poly geo, right? Like it's it's very crude, but now that we've got this here, we don't need to keep that around anymore. And what I'm gonna do here is I'd like to extrude it, 
but it's probably too dense right now to do any kind of actual extrusion work with. Like I could, you know, to, to do Z modeler, it's gonna have to calculate on every single polygon what it is that I'm looking for. And there are currently uh, half a million polygons. So I, the computer could probably do it. It would just take a long time. So what I'm gonna do instead is we're gonna just do a little Z, Z remesh on it here. So go to geometry, try to find Z remesher in here. There we go. And I'm going to give this thing, so again, five means 5,000 polygons. That's nowhere near enough. So let's try like 15. And we'll do a Z remesher. 15 may seem like a big number relative to five, but ZBrush isn't even going to breathe heavy messing with the a mesh that's 15,000 polygons. So I'll go ahead and pause it for a second. We'll just let this process finish. All right, so I forgot to delete hidden on this. So obviously that's not going to work. Let me just hit Control Z. We'll do a delete hidden and it may take less time now. All right. So you can see at 15,000, it did a pretty good job of preserving the silhouette. And now I can do some of this uh, Z modeler stuff with a little bit more uh, predictability in terms of like how the performance is going to go. So I'm doing QMesh, I'll set it to polygroup all. I'm going to pull it out. Looks like there might be a little something weird going on up there. Uh, that's maybe just something in the background. Uh, I'm going to want to add a little bit of uh, an edge loop here. I don't know if I've got my symmetry on. I do. Cool. So I'm just going to eyeball it. doesn't have to be perfect. This is for the sake of this example. And now we'll go ahead and just isolate The, the little bottom strip there, I need to make sure I've got the right select here. So we'll go to select lasso, and then I'm just gonna hide the top pieces. Because again, what I'd like to do is, so you can insert there, hide. We're just gonna do an inflate on the bottom piece here. And whatever, I'm gonna hit control W. Doesn't make a huge difference, but in terms of the, the uh, color that I'm getting, but it is definitely a new poly group. Makes it a little bit easier to see which ones I'm missing. All right, so let's see. So I missed a couple there. And now I'm gonna hop over to the regular select lasso so I can just do some heavy handed isolating here. We'll grab these red guys, invert. All right, I'm just trying to put everything, like all of the pieces that are on this like lower strip onto their own polygroup. And I think that's now done. So I can come over with an inflate and just kind of, maybe it's masked. Set this to polygroup all. We can bring it out and then do increase polygroups. Turn on dynamic resolution. Drop this down a little bit. Because the geo is so dense, probably a lower value is going to work a little bit better there. And there you go. There's our nice, our nice clean piece with a, a, a I mean, it's a, not a super low poly count, but it's not completely unreasonable. It isn't symmetrical, so it's pretty easy to just come over. And assuming my thing is in world space, which is probably pretty close because I, I centered it on that box, uh, but I can just come over to modified topology and then mirror and weld. I like the other side better, so I'm going to flip it. I like that kind of sharp corner up there. So we'll do uh, just a, a mirror here, which essentially just flips it. And then we can do that mirror and weld one more time. It will copy from the correct side. And there you go. So that's how you can make a more interesting piece of geometry using an alpha. And if I had decided to project this onto a piece of curved geometry, I would have a, a curved result as well. Like it's, uh, it's not something that uh, has to be projected onto a flat plane. And Speaking of that, this may be too dense of a piece of geometry here. Oh, make sure you don't have any weird stuff like that. That's just probably from like the backside of my cube or something, but I, I don't need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just to make this as cheap as possible. I'm going to delete those faces there. I'm going to add this to a uh, to an insert multi mesh. Uh, 
and then uh, and then we'll, we'll I'll show you one interesting little feature on there. In fact, I'm going to do that in the next video. That's worth its own video.